All right, what do we have? <coughs> Excuse me, what do we have here? We have four LEDs wired in series on a heat sink. This is an LM317 being used as a constant current source. This is a 10 ohm resistor. <coughs> the 10 ohm resistor determines the current flow through the circuit. I have two voltage I have two power packs I'm going to use on this. This one's off of a compact computer, 19 volts. And this is a 13.5 volt DC power pack. This is where I'm going to plug them in. So let's observe here. The way this works, if you divide 1.25 by 10 ohms, you should get 125 milliamps in this circuit through the LEDs. I'm going to cover them so it won't blind the camera. First of all, we're going to put in 19 volts. Pretty close at 126 or 127 milliamps. Pretty close. Let's plug in the 13 volt power pack. hundred twenty seven point one no real difference the current flow is not determined by the voltage input it is determined by the value of the reference resistor this is a 20 ohm resistor I'm going to go ahead and wire it in in the place of the 10 ohm resistor and that should cut the current in half 1.2 5 volts divided by 20, that's going to be, what, 100, about between 60 and 70 milliamps. Let's find out if it works. All right, the 20 ohm resistor is on there. I'm going to cover that. I'm going to plug in the 13 volt power supply first. 62 by 63 milliamps. That's what you should get. Let's try the 19 volt power supply. <laughs> Same current flow, once again. Determined only by the resistor. Let's take a look at the closer circuit explanation and the calculations as to why this works as it does. <coughs> How it works as it does, excuse me. Here's the circuit that, that you actually saw working at the beginning of the video. I used a 19 volt input from a laptop power supply Here's my LM317 that limits my current. This is this was a 4.7 ohm resistor. It was a surface mount device. And I had four white LEDs in series. Alright. One thing about LEDs, light emitting diodes in the real world, is just because this spec sheet, for example, says, well, it's, they're all, they drop 3.2 volts, no. In the real world, there's slight manufacturing differences. They could drop anywhere from 2.9, 3.2, 3.1, 1, whatever. So that is the problem with using, say, a resistor to drop the voltage as opposed to controlling the current with a constant current source. Is By the way, as they warm up, this voltage drop will shift on you. So let's look at our total voltage drop at this with these four right here is 12.2 volts. 
if I have a 19 volt input, that means the voltage drop across the U3, the LM317, and R3 is going to come out to 6.8 volt. The current is strictly controlled by the value of the 4.7 ohm resistor. 1.25 volts is generated across the resistor and that really and that divided by the resistance through the adjust feedback is what determines your current. So in this case R3 and U3 drop 6.8 volts the four LEDs drop 12.2 volts. 12.2 plus 6.8 does what? Equals back to the source voltage of 19 volts. Now, let's consider this factor. We have a current flow of 260 milliamps. 1.25 divided by 4.7. It's going to give you approximately 260 milliamps. So 12.2 times 0.26 is going to, I didn't calculate that up, but you can do that yourself. What's important here is the 260 milliamps flowing through U3 and R3 times 6.8 volts means I generated 1.77 watts of heat, useless heat. Let's see how this works a little more if we either jump the voltage or remove an LED. Um, so I've wasted, uh, if you look at it here, almost a third of my power that I'm using is just wasted as heat maintaining the constant current source. All right, here's the same circuit before, except I changed one thing. I removed one LED and just put a jumper across it. Now I have three LEDs in series. Total voltage drop on my three LEDs is 9 volts. 2.9 volts plus 3 volts plus 3.1 volts. The, volt, the current stays the same because the current is determined by the 1.25 volt across R3 divided by, <coughs> excuse me, 4.7 ohms. What happened to my voltage from that LED? All right. If we subtract 9 volts from 19 volts, you will find out that the drop across U3 and R3 is 10 volts. 10 volts times 260 milliamps is going to give me 2.6 watts. So at this point, with three LEDs and 19 volts still going in, I have dropped over half my power as wasted heat in the LM317. This is the trick with, again, this is all a series circuit. The LM317 resistor combination is in series with the three LEDs. The voltage drops are proportional, except you could say, in a way, that the LM317 varies its internal resistance to maintain a fixed current. The internal resistance in the LEDs didn't change, but it increased the internal resistance in the LM317 to drop the additional voltage that would have driven these voltages on these LEDs higher. But this is not very efficient, is it? This is less than 50% of my energy is getting to my three LEDs. Let's look at the next slide see what we got. Wow, we got it even worse. What if I jump my voltage up to 24 volts? My current stays exactly the same because that's still determined by the 4.7 ohm resistor and the 1.25 volts across R3. The voltage drop on my LEDs is 
still the same because I still got the same current of 260 milliamps. So what do we got for drop across the LM317R3 combination? 24 volts minus 9 volts is 15 volts. Uh, 15 volts times 260 milliamps is 3.9 watts. So I have so I have an efficiency. I have dropped the efficiency of this circuit down to what 30, 35 percent, maybe 40. A lot of wasted heat here, but I still managed to maintain my cur fixed current because you want a fixed current to light up LEDs or else it creates all kinds of problems that will overheat the voltages will div won't divide properly it just it's just a mess you want a constant current source but in the case of this 24 volt setup I'm really burning up most of my energy is heat what can we do about this the obvious solution is to use a switching regulator to lower the voltage going in to the constant current LED string before it gets there. As I've introduced already, the LM2575 type buck step-down switching regulators are cheap and easy to build. In this case, this is the variable, this is the variable version. What if I lowered my input voltage to say for the three LEDs, I lowered it to down to 12 volts. Aha! Very little voltage is going to be dropped by the LM317. You might have a, oh, I don't know, at 24 volts, you at 260 mils, you might have a quarter of a watt if this thing is 80% efficient. I haven't done the calculation. These things, assuming 80% efficiency, it's not going to um, generate much heat in this. If I was to drop my output to 12 volts, I need to maintain it 3 or 4 volts above the voltage source needed by the LEDs. Let's say 12 volts. And all the LM317 will be dropping is the remaining 3 volts times 260 milliamps. And that'll be the 260 milliamps that flows through this circuit, which is rated at 1 amp. So, wow, that's efficient. A lot of integrated, you have integrated circuits out there that have both a voltage, switching voltage step down and a constant current source built in together. I've looked around at them. The chips are sort of complex. They're usually surface mount. I would go with this. Or you could use an input uh, voltage that's that's a few volts above what you need. But the LM317 will work well if it's 3 volts above the voltage that you need it. In my test, you might want to go to 4 or 5 possibly. But that's up to you. <clears throat> Alright, let's look at another problem here. Maybe I needed to do nine LEDs in three strings of three, as shown here. And say, let's just argue I want it 250 milliamps per string. That's 750 milliamps total. I can calculate up my resistor and divide it into 1.25 to get about 750 milliamps that's going to divide between these three strings of three LEDs each. Couple of problems. Again, the LEDs in the real world are going to have differing voltage drops. So the current will not divide evenly. It's sort of random and you have an additional problem what if one LED opens in one string? That means the 750 milliamps is going to divide between the other two strings 
and they're going to be rapidly overheated and burn out. You'll probably wipe out all three strings in a short time. That's this is not recommended for a lot of reasons, and that and that's why uh, because the the current will not divide evenly, and if you lose one string, the all the remaining current is going to be split between the two. Sooner or later, one of the other two strings is going to overheat and go out. Then the remaining current's going to be dumped through the remaining string, and it won't last long either. So the obvious solution, this is from a factory spec sheet. You used a single LM317. You used separate sense resistors and a transistor on each of the strings. If you lose one string, the current is reduced proportionally. If you lose one string, it'll reduce the current by a third and won't affect the other two strings. Here is my opinion on this, what they're doing here. It's not worth it. The LM317s, and you can get some, say you wanted, say 20, depends on your current in your LED. I would simply use three LM317 circuits in parallel. And, and because they're, they're so cheap, you can get them some places 10 for a dollar. So why fool with me, um, trying to guess what value you need for these base resistors and so forth? If you've got the transistors, and the base resistor is fine, but you might just want to use three LM317s. But this is an idea that you could also use. Um, it's up to you. And so this completes this overview of using constant current sources to light up LEDs. And it's also, and as I said, it's also a review on how constant current sources works. Thanks for listening. Um, visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.